What's going on, Minecraft fans? My name's Luke the Notable. Welcome to the 4,000 Days World Tour. Now, before you watch this video, there will be spoilers, so make sure to go watch the real 4,000 Days first if you don't want to get spoiled. Down in the description, you'll find a world download link. You'll be able to download this world and play it on your own machine. Java only, though. Sorry, Bedrock Boys. The world is just far too big to put it to Bedrock. Every time I try to convert it, it just ends up getting corrupted. And before we really get this going, if you have watched 4,000 Days, you probably heard the song built the wall a lot of you wanted an extended version of that song and me and my brother worked on it for a while and now we have one out so sorry it's actually not out when i recorded this i thought putting something on spotify was easy but it's not it's just gonna take a little time i'm gonna post the song on youtube tomorrow at least when this video is fresh it will be on spotify at some point Today, I'll be showing you a lot of the things that I built in 4,000 days. 4,000 days is very fast. I can't spend too much time on any one particular day. And the world tours are nice because I can show things more in depth. I'll be kind of going in order somewhat. You know, we'll do our best. Of course, I started the video with an entrance to myself. I thought that was just an absolutely great joke to say, Oh, to start 4,000 days, I'm going to go inside myself. You all know. That's, it's, it's a good one. All of the redstone for that is underneath. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I, uh, when I go back and watch 4,000 days before I make this video, one of the things that was very apparent is how primitive this redstone does look. Even after 300, 3,000 days, I really could have made this a lot cleaner. It's pretty messy, and there's a lot of room <laughs> that is totally unnecessary like why is this all here and i just want to show this not to show you my bad redstone but to show you how you know sometimes in these videos there's so much time uh, i will myself become as much better of a player and my whole point here is to tell you to make your own hundred days go do it please it'll make you a better player it will all right let me show you probably one of my favorite builds of the first hundred days i put a lot of work into that first hundred days it was very curated i wanted to make sure that i really had some really nice builds that i was going to put in those first hundred days to make the video better and yes the first thing that i built was that entrance into myself but the second thing i built uh, was probably one of my favorite builds in the entire tower and you guessed it it's the money shower let me see if i can up my FOV here and kind of show you the whole thing. I don't really like playing on Quake Pro, but it does it does let you see the whole thing pretty well. It was an idea that I had. I mean, it's actually a fairly simple concept, uh, but one that was made difficult by the fact that I had to build it all inside of my Emerald Tower. When you're working with those tiny little spaces, it can be quite difficult to really build everything. You can see how close water lines are next to redstone lines. It all was kind of challenging. I've got two water lines here right next to redstone and hoppers, and it was a big challenge. I did all of this live, and if you go back and watch that live stream, you can see just how hard it was for me to build this all. If you look, the actual shower is really not that big. We're talking maybe four blocks tall, two blocks wide, but underneath it requires this massive redstone room and then above it also requires a massive redstone room so that just goes to show how hard this build was to actually make work in the emerald tower itself kind of a dumb build sure but hardcore minecraft is about vanity now this chronologically this room was not built next in the playthrough but we're right here so we might as well go to it and it's kind of simple to, to explain. It's just the room of my face. Really didn't show too much of this. I'm going to show a couple more kind of continuous shots of this. I didn't spend too long in here. It is kind of weird when you stand in this room. Uh, if you download the world yourself, come into this room and just kind of walk around. It's it's interesting. <laughs> I really like this room. I uh, don't go in it all that often because it can hurt your head. Uh, but it's one of those rooms that is uh, definitely weird. It gives me the idea for making something like this with different map arts. Uh, building this map art of my face, as you know, and I can go to that site uh, right now. I can go there. Building this map art was not super, super difficult, just more time consuming. So we'll, we'll actually go there right now. You know, this is also a video for frequently asked questions. And one of the big things that I got asked about a lot in 4,000 days is why is my day number incorrect so the day number reset right after 2000 days i'm not exactly sure why but my best guess is while i was filming the trailer for 2000 days i was in the world kind of like i am now in in creative um just to get shots of the of the world just so i could put that up for the trailer and i must have used the cheat time set day which as you can see resets the counter to day zero and then when i played 2,000 days into 3,000 days, I was playing on that world by mistake. 
So I must have accidentally reset the counter and then uh, just kept playing on the world. And if you take 2,000, whatever that day number was at, 2,026, add 2,000, we're on day 4,000. So that's my best guess. While filming the trailer for 2,000 days, I just reset the time to get a nice good shot of my compound. And doing that, I reset the day. And then I probably just didn't notice, started playing on that world. And now we're here. Uh, and I normally find my map art by now i think i'm a little lost let me let me go back home oh no we gotta find my face oh uh, see this looks more familiar it was in a mountainy region and it wasn't that far away north maybe a thousand blocks or so here we go here we go i see it on the horizon i see it so there it is my face art i didn't get too many big shots of it uh i think in the time that i was doing it i was just feeling that grind of it you know i just kind of wanted it done <laughs> but it is beautiful i haven't come back here since actually and just looking at it wow it took a lot of time i'm very lucky that my face is gray <laughs> that that made the entire process a lot easier because i could just find you know a nice area with a lot of gray stuff already but this was a lot of leveling a lot of digging a lot of uh mud getting a lot of wool <laughs> and it turned out beautiful it really did look at that it's just perfect. It helps that my Minecraft face is just very, very, very simple. But yeah, really proud of that. And here's those coordinates if you want to go here yourself and just kind of walk around. And again, a little bit of explanation as to why that day number is wrong. I got a lot of those comments. More than normal, actually, I think. All right, back home. All right, let's talk about some more things I did on the industrial side. We've been kind of talking about artsy projects. And uh, I didn't do too much on the industrial side, but one thing I was very proud of was my bamboo farm upgrade. This, in the video, I kind of skated over, didn't really talk too much about it because, well, let's be honest, seeing me build farms is not exactly the most interesting thing. And as you can see, actually, there's some scaffolding here that probably should have been destroyed, doesn't really need to build, be here, but... You know, whatever, I'm in creative here. I was in survival when I built it. I'm just proud of my design here. I essentially made my entire farm way more efficient by taking all of the poppies uh, that I got out of the iron farm and converting them into bone meal, which is then converted into bamboo. It's very efficient. I think if you have an iron farm and a bamboo farm, you should find a way to combine them. And let me show you how well this thing works. I really didn't show it in the video but let me just grab a couple of stacks of bone meal here and i'll just show you how quick this thing works so naturally the farm is a little slower because it has to get poppies from the iron uh the iron men but if you just have a bunch of bone meal and throw it in there you'll see that the bone meal grows one thing of bamboo all the way up and then will constantly destroy it so every piece of bone meal gets used and put into to work uh, to make more bamboo it's it's very very efficient now not that efficient because it's got spots uh where <laughs> the hoppers aren't covered and that's always something you want to do pro tip if your hoppers are not covered uh that can sometimes hurt your lag and maybe that's something i need to think about and do in 5,000 days and then oh iron farm iron farm's busted Oh, geez. I guess I'll have to fix that in 5,000 days, too. And now I'm going to go look at my iron farm and see if uh, any of these hoppers are uncovered. No, no, these ones are good. I did a pretty good job down here covering it all up. But yeah, as you can see, every single time that a poppy is created, it's converted into bone meal, and then those are all sent up and made into bamboo. Very, very, very efficient build before I was just burning the poppies. And that's just, you know, you got a good piece of vegetation there. You might as well use it for something even if I don't end up using bamboo all that often. If you think about it, in theory, I can burn bamboo, right? Is that, is that, is that canon? Let me try this. It works! I, I have made unlimited fuel. Unlimited fuel forever. I never even have to worry about getting lava anymore, even though I already have an automatic lava farm. But I'm very proud of my uh, bamboo farm upgrades, and I hope you are proud of me too. It's just one of those things that's come a long way in this series, and this thing, both of them, have really been there for so long, and now they work together. I think it's so cool. They're next to each other, and they weren't put next to each other for any particular reason other than being on the industrial side. And now they work together. The melon farm was not touched at all. Really, I did not did not do much melon trading in all of 4,000 days. The library, though, got a huge upgrade. And by huge, yeah, I mean huge. I mean, the, the library is actually massive now. None of the villagers really changed, but the whole inside was so uh, just depressing, I think is a good word for it. All the villagers were sort of put into one area and kind of not able to move around and and now they're much more free they can kind of do what they want 
Um, I did give them beds, but took them away because actually that was making them glitch out in a little bit, so they had to get those bed privileges taken away. Uh, but I really like the new version of the library. One of my favorite aspects of the library though, and one that I really haven't started using yet, but I think will be very much used in 5,000 days, is this little back thing. And, and it, I think it'll be very useful in 5,000 days is uh, what I call a code block farm. So uh, one of the things I do now in my redstone, in my builds, it's something I learned in my creative 100 days, is I try whenever possible to put redstone on what I would call a, a code block. I'm building it to code. Um, and, and the reason I do this is if you ever have underground redstone, and this is a very good tip, if you ever have underground redstone and you put your redstone on something like stone, you may be mining one day where your redstone is, not realize that this is a stone block with redstone on it, mine the block, and now your whole entire build is broken. But if you use something like wool and you're mining and come across wool, you'll go, oh, okay, not gonna mine that. That has redstone on it. I'm gonna break something. And I do that similarly with, um, uh, generally I use yellow for redstone, blue, is generally water lines for me. So if I have uh, a water line, I've got water pipes going through the compound at different spots. I use blue. And then I have red here just because sometimes I also like to use red, but generally I use yellow. Uh, anyway, I set these up. Very simple sheep farm. Just really, really simple uh, with, some, with some shears in the back. And they pretty much went all of a thousand days. And boom, look at that. I'll basically never have to worry about building water lines ever again. Electrical never have to worry about that ever again because now I have two uh, basically full double chests of of electrical blocks, water lines. And I built this thing live on stream and I said to the stream, I said, you're not going to see this thing really being used at all for about a thousand days. But after a thousand days, now it's here and I can use it. So I'm really proud of this build coming and uh, being useful finally. While we're here, let's talk about the murals. This is also one that really kind of, I did not spend a whole lot of time looking at each individual one. So I'm gonna do kind of a continuous shot here and, and let you see each one because I am proud of the artisticness that, that went into some of these. So um, first off, obviously we have Super Flat. It was the first 100 days spinoff that ever happened. And uh, still probably my faith when people ask me, you know, what's your favorite spinoff? Super flat. It just lives in my heart. It does. It was the first one. It had you know, so much, so many good moments. I also think with how the game is updated, I don't know if you really could do a super flat 100 days like I did it. Um, so that one will always have a special place in my heart. Creative is the next one. And that one as well, really, I, uh, I, I, I think I learned a lot in that video. That's what I think I really want to do a sequel to um, because at the time I had made this creative video, I really was fairly primitive with things like redstone and building. And it did make me better, but uh, you know, I, th I think I even from that, I've come a very long way. And it'd be interesting to see what I can do with another 100 days in creative. So if you want to see that, maybe hit the like button. Next, we have Nether. This one I'm very proud of because my gear here, you can see my head, legs, pants, and chest plate, is actually what I had uh, by the end of the video. I really never got diamonds. Uh, I think I had some diamond tools, and I believe a netherite helmet that I didn't wear. But either way, that is what I looked like by the end of the nether. And nether and end, I'll, I'll show both here on the shot, <clears throat> really taught me a lot about those dimensions. I attribute a lot of my success to the nether and end thanks to those two videos. And, and I know I said earlier to play 100 days. Play 100 days, man. It makes you a better Minecraft play. Next one is 69 days. It's just upside down. <laughs> so that one's kind of silly. I like that one. Old Minecraft is right here. I don't know why that's open. Old Minecraft. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure what to do here. So I just did the old village. And if, if you've ever, ever played old Minecraft, you'll know a lot of the old villages had a lot of gravel for whatever reason. They had gravel like everywhere. Uh, so that's old Minecraft. Not much in old Minecraft. So I guess the mural would be somewhat simple. Uh, this is Pocket. It has, uh, I'm supposed to be in a phone. So... It, I did my best. I did my best with that one. I did my best. Here's caves. This one I really, really love because it has all of these different little ores. I like the two-tone with the deep slate and the cobble. It kind of looks... It, it has a weird... It has an interesting perspective. I really, really like it. And uh, it also has the one deep slate emerald ore that I have on the compound. This is actually a very, very, very rare block. And I have one and it's now prominently displayed in a mural. Uh, this, we'll get to the, this is the turtle farm. I, I know I have a lot of weird deep slate buildings on this side. Uh, <clears throat> I will say 
it is kind of annoying when I want to look at my beautiful murals and uh, I want to look at cheats and there's a big turtle farm here and I'm kind of forced to you know <laughs> get real close to it uh, but this is the first one with my new Minecraft skin uh, oh that is a weird look that's a weird look right there but my Minecraft skin so this mural is very important to me I also have Badlands obviously just me and the Badlands and then this is RTX. Uh, you know, it's shiny. It's shiny. I decided to go with a shiny look. I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, at the time that I made these murals, those were the only 100 days that I had ever created. So uh, keep that in mind. <clears throat> and I know that, like with the turtles, uh, some of these are a little bit, you know, you can't really see them. So I've thought about maybe doing something with this backside, maybe flipping the emeralds, right? All I would really have to do is take these emeralds down. I'm doing this in creative, so it's it's pretty quick. And then you'd be able to see the mural from the other side. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet or not, but that is something that is definitely on the plans for maybe thinking about in 5,000 days. Oh, oh, I almost forgot about this one. <laughs> this is so cool. Let me, let me set the time. We are looking at the scale replica of the compound now this is one that i just really really love it was an idea that i had and it it turned out perfectly i really and i don't mean to like toot my own horn i i try to be humble when i can but my minecraft base is uh i mean it's, let's let's be honest guys it's iconic right come on it's it's you know the emerald tower it's, it's in meme <laughs> uh and i don't think many people can say that about a minecraft base when you look at something like this and say oh that's that's the uh, luke the notables emerald tower so i thought this would be a good thing to make a replica of to make some art of well my base and obviously the biggest thing being the emerald tower smack dab in the middle um but really i just tried to put every little building that i could that's on the compound here and looking somewhat like it should. Um, and I, I kind of spend too much time showing the completed section. I figured I would show it in the tour, and that's what we're doing here. So it's a 1 to 13 scale replica of the compound. Why did I choose 1 to 13? I don't exactly remember. I think I looked at the tower first and said, okay, how can I sort of scale this down so that the tower is somewhat, you know, recognizable as being the tall tower, but then all the other things aren't also really, really weird and, and off scale. Um, and I went with 1 to 13. So, uh, however, tall this is 13 times that is how tall the x um and the, the tower was obviously the first thing that i did and then i kind of did everything else around it and it really did come out i need to put in a scale uh i don't know why i'm doing this in creative let me just see how it looks um an item frame i need a scale emerald luke the notable right next to the uh, original <laughs> i could probably also put a tree in here maybe an oak block uh, but anyway, it's it's a very cool thing. You've got the five-year garden, the statues of myself. Um, this wood thing is supposed to be the big totem. Gold is supposed to be the vault. The black stone is my nether access. This blue is the uh, Tim monuments, which are now... There's two of them. When I first built this, there was only one. Now there's two of them. This here, uh, the staircase, is supposed to represent my storage. Uh, and I probably could have done a little more with that. Oh, there's redstone. Well, anyway. <laughs> uh, the, here's the iron farm. Not the iron farm, but the iron... Um, the iron cellars. The wool cellars. Uh, you've got pretty much everything that is in the inner... inner wall of the compound here. And it made a really, really, really nice build that I really am proud of. And I challenge you, if you have a Minecraft build, do this yourself, please, please. If you have a compound, if you have a base, it can be kind of fun to make a memorial to it. You don't have to have a super cool compound that's seen in the memes and blah, 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 blah. Just make one. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, what are we going to talk about next? What are we going to talk about next? Let's talk about the TNT block. We're over here, aren't we? Come on, TNT block. So I said in the video about this TNT block, um, this was originally built sometime in 1,000 days, the from 300 to 1,000. I don't remember exactly what time, uh, but it was built then. Originally, it was over there, kind of by where... Oh, you know, I should get a spyglass. Originally, it was built on this side of the compound. 
uh, right in this area next to this jungle tree, next to my throne. Um, it was built in that area. And it was put there, why? Well, yeah, maybe because I didn't, I wasn't the best planner. <laughs> but from the moment I put it down, even though it was built with wool, I wanted to fill it with actual TNT. And if you watched 4,000 Days, I hope you have, you'll know that it is filled with actual TNT. I want to see it blow up. We're going to do it at the end of this video for anyone who cannot blow up the world themselves. I thought about not blowing the TNT block up in this video, uh, but then I thought, well, what about the bedrockers, you know? What about the, the people who can't download the world and won't be able to see it blow up? At least I can do that for them. And, uh, you know, kind of for selfish reasons, too. Now I get to blow up the TNT block, too, uh, and, and have there really be no consequences for it. <laughs> but it's completely full of TNT. Stick around to the end of the video. You will see this thing below sky high. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. There's a bunker over here, and I tried to make this thing in a way... I, I tried to make it look like a bunker. I, I tried to make it in a way where I don't think... I, I don't think it'll matter. I don't think the TNT will hit you, but it might. So either way, it's just a world download. It's not a big deal. But stick around to the end of the video. We'll blow up the TNT block in this video. Or you can skip that part, download the world, and do it yourself. Either way, it'll be fun. The TNT block it did take a very long time. I have here in my notes, I started it on day 3127 and ended it uh, over 150 days later on 3291. Now, I remember in the video, I did get very distracted. But still, 151 days from start to finish. It was a lot of TNT. A big part of it was my creeper farm which I am going to show you because like the bamboo farm I'm, I'm proud of it uh, this is one that its base didn't come from my design meaning the guts of this thing what makes it work what makes it a creeper farm I didn't create um, and I'm sorry I don't know who exactly did uh, but you know this whole idea with there being a cat there being <laughs> wool and the pit in the middle. I have no idea why that works, why that makes creepers. The only thing I added, uh, <laughs> the only thing I added were these on off lights, which work very, very well. If you want to turn the farm off, all you have to do is hit these levers and the farm does not spawn. <laughs> very, very convenient. It would be nice if I only had to hit a single switch to make those all work. And I think that might be something I try to do in 5,000 days, just because if I ever want to turn this thing off, it is a bit of a pain. I have to go all the way up, hit like 20 levers, and then have to go all the way up on the other side, hit like 20 levers. It'd be nice just to hit a button. I think it would be kind of possible, though it is always easier and creative. If I get like a little thing here, let me see, let me see. If I put this across, and then maybe have a signal coming down, that could go all the way down. Let me see, redstone, like a little signal here. Boop. Ooh, yeah, you know, that could work. That could work. That'll obviously take some time. Might be something you see in 5,000 days, though no promises. I'm going to write it down, though, right now. I've got a list in my phone, a running list in my phone of things uh, to put into 5,000 days. At the time, I didn't do it because I didn't want to keep messing with the farm, but I think it's something that I have the time uh, with a fresh new 100 days, or fresh new 1,000 days. Let's go down to a very important build, one that you might not think of when you think of very important builds on the compound, but it's something that really every Minecraft player needs, and that is my storage. Uh, the storage got a very big upgrade in 4,000 days. Much of the first level is pretty much the same, though I did get a new area for my bulk storage and my potion brewing area. So the old storage had a ceiling that basically ended here. Uh, this all used to be basically rock. And I cut that up, put emeralds on everything, quartzed it all up, you know, how I like to do. And it gave me a lot more room up here for new stuff. When I was building the wall, which we'll talk about, this whole area was filled with double chests of cobblestone. And if I didn't have this area for all that, I think I would have got bogged down in my storage pretty quickly with bulk, bulk cobblestone. I'm not totally crazy about the mine entrance. I really am not, and it might be something that gets removed, especially since I really don't mine all that often anyway. Uh, but for now, it's stayed. Upgrading my storage really has been a, a huge, huge quality of life update for myself. Uh, you're always in your storage, right? If you've, if you've ever played Minecraft for long enough and gotten strong enough, 
you know that your storage is really what keeps you moving. It's what keeps you efficient and what allows you to build big things. If you can't store your items effectively and you can't get rid of the items you don't want, you're just going to be swamped and you're always going to be looking for something, looking for your next, your, your all of your, your things, your tools, your blocks. You need a good storage. And I spent some time and made mine much better. One of the main reasons I upgraded my storage is I was constantly, constantly, constantly bonking my head when I would fly out. So imagine, imagine right here, imagine this ceiling comes down another three blocks or so. Right. So imagine this ceiling comes down. If I want to get out, it was just a bit harder of a of a, uh, a path to negotiate. And coming in, it was much harder too. Um, but with it opened up, it was just so much easier to fly in and out. And when I built that, I didn't think... When I originally built the storage, I didn't think of that. But as I used it for a couple thousand days, I realized that I really want to make sure that this is something that I can fly in and out of very, very simply. In fact, very early in the video, I pop a totem uh, on these steps, and I think that's primarily because uh, the storage wasn't that easy to fly in and out of. I was kind of landing on the steps and popped a totem. Uh, people really liked that part of the video. One of the biggest, I think at least in the premiere of the video, one of the things people liked the most uh, was my nether wart farm. Uh, and they loved seeing Jesse die. Yeah, sorry, Jesse, you were a big, you were a big hit. And <laughs> when you're, you're, technically this is not the same Jesse. Uh, and I did not show that in 4,000 days. I didn't show myself making another Jesse. But just so you know, there is another Jesse, uh, Walta over here. He never got clapped, but Walta and Jesse, they tend my nether wart. And I just, I wanted to show this for anyone that was worried about Jesse. I, I did make another one. I did make another one. Uh, they work very well in here because they can't put their snow on nether wart. This this whole farm was just a joke, so I, I, I'm glad people liked it. Of course, went along with the potion brewing area, which, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't really brew potions all that often. Uh, but the old room, which I believe is still there, is, was, I don't know what I would even say about that, was in the tower right up here. So every time I wanted to brew a potion, I would have to go up the ladder. The storage here was pretty bad. It, it wasn't it wasn't efficient, like my potion brewing room now in the storage. Um, so it's now just a one-stop shop for all things storage, all things potions. It's organized. If I ever need to brew something, I can come here and get it done. A lot about Minecraft is just making your world more efficient and it's something that I've done I think throughout the entirety of this playthrough let's go to the turtle farm yeah you want to see the turtle farm you know skip ahead a few seconds or whatever a few minutes if you don't want to see the turtle farm but I am proud of the turtle farm oh what is this gross I am proud of the turtle farm even if it doesn't work that effectively I think this is something that I want to rebuild in 5,000 days to get more effective and one thing i said in the video 4000 days is this turtle farm could work very very well if i didn't burn them and having it all stacked on top of each other is also another thing that makes this whole thing inefficient if i really want a good turtle farm i think it could be much more simple and i don't necessarily need to even burn them all uh, I, I think i could make a much more efficient a, a, a farm that makes a lot more turtle scoots and burning them isn't even necessary though it is kind of funny in the video some people like to see that i know it it's okay you can laugh my basic design that i'm going to go with is essentially this farm is two layers get rid of one of them just make a collection system underneath some sand i think that should work right brew can i can i put turtle eggs on sandstone oh you can look at that you can you can put turtle eggs on sandstone you just put turtle eggs on sandstone let them hatch let them grow up put more turtle eggs it should be that simple if it really becomes a problem with stuff like entity cramming and all that just just kill them with a sword you know it didn't need to be this extravagant thing <laughs> with automatic turtle burning feature uh but you know what it made people laugh and at the end of the day that's all i really care about the u2s the U2s is next on the list. I'm kind of going in chronological order. Not totally, but kind of. And on day 3200, I crafted 
My U2's replica. I, I just want to say to the people over at U2's, thank you for including me. Uh, I was very, very honored to get the email. Uh, you know, I, I checked my business email and some a lot of it is a lot of it is garbage, I'll be honest. But when I saw U2's X Loop the Notable, I thought, oh man, I've made it. I've made it. I now have an action figure, even if it's only my head. And I was so proud of having my own YouTube that I decided to build a replica. I streamed the whole thing, had lots of people coming out and purchasing the U2s. You know, I'm just very, very proud of this. So proud, I wanted to put it on the camp. So it's here. It'll be here forever. My head. I'm just so, so proud of it. So thank you, U2s. Thank you to everyone who purchased one. You're all very notable. Let's talk about the next thing. Uh, not really the next thing, but one of the next things was the arena. Yes, on day 3250, I finished the arena. And it's, you know, let's be honest, guys. Is it much of an arena? Um, uh, no, actually. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's... Well, you can go in there and get out. But, you know, when I, when I had the idea of building an arena, I didn't know what it was going to look like. But I thought at least I should put it together and see if it looks any bit decent it looks like it also got what did it get partially blown up oh no oh no oh i left something blown up on the compound that's so embarrassing no yeah this this had like a whole what no no the redstone's all jacked up dude uh oh I told myself i wouldn't do this again i told myself i wouldn't leave stuff destroyed but yeah no look yep yeah. This, there definitely was TNT that came through here. Wrecked to this part of the arena. You can see here, this should all be grass. Oh, that's embarrassing. I am just... I'm, you're just telling me this for the first time. You, I'm just now hearing about this. Oh, no. Oh, well. Well, that's something I'll have to fix in 5,000 days, I guess. Ah! <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. It just goes to show you how uh, little I care about this build. It's something that I thought about fighting the warden in. I thought about fighting the warden in an arena like this. Uh, but I did some tests, and I don't think I would live. <laughs> Part of it, I wanted to test in the video. There's, some, there's a lot of things that you don't really get context for, right? One of the things I did in the video was I made Turtle Master Potions. Part of the reason I did that is they're supposed to make you very, very hard to kill. And I wanted to test how I would do against a warden with a Turtle Master Potion. And the answer is probably not that good. I also, I, on day, I think it's 3585? 3585? Let me, let me check my notes real quick. Yes. So 3585, I say something in the video like, it's a bad dream. And you can see like I'm, there's a warden and dogs chasing me. All this craziness. That was me testing a dog army. And I was thinking about fighting the uh the warden with the dog army and it became sort of a silly joke in the video but this arena was always supposed to when i first built it anyway was supposed to be a place where i would potentially fight the warden on my camp i might still do that i, I may i don't know if i'm gonna but i might still do that all i would really need is to connect if you remember underneath my compound there's a whole warden trapping mechanism all i would have to do is very simply connect that to the arena and then I could transport a warden to the arena, fight it, kill it, you know, live in harmony. I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. Can't do that anyway because I blew up the whole thing. Uh, now we're kind of at the point where we've got to leave the compound for a second. Got to leave the compound. Okay, now we're kind of at the point where we got to leave the compound for just a second. And show you some of the stuff we built outside of the compound. Uh, I will say this this video 4,000 days. I didn't I spent most of my time home at home Building stuff at home, uh, but there was one thing One one thing that I did build away from home and that was on day 3 420 <laughs> I upgraded this house It had been 3,000 days But I did it so if you don't remember on the original day 3 420 I made a joke about Sweetberry Bush, and I had built this sort of hobbit hole type house, sort of, and, and made a joke about burning that Sweetberry Bush. Uh, very funny. Hor horribly funny joke that I'm sure you are all still laughing about right now. Um, really, control yourself. I know I'm, I know I'm hilarious. I know. I know. It's okay. You can, you can laugh, but really, quiet down. It was a, it was a hobbit hole. 
uh, if you look back at the old videos or download one of the old tours, you can come to this house and you'll see that it really wasn't a house at all. It was a hobbit hole, a poorly constructed hobbit hole built on day 420, uh, which was, I don't know, like three years ago. I've, I've changed a lot as a Minecraft player and that house coming there on day three, 420 in the new, in the new 4,000 day, I just looked at it and thought, man, this cannot, I need to do something about this. And when I came in to renovate, I thought I was gonna just gut the whole thing. But in reality, I, I went in and thought, you know, do I really wanna do that? No, because a lot of this is, it's kind of historic. This is, I built this, you know, 3000 days ago. This is what I thought looked good. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, I would never build something like this today, uh, but that's kind of the point. Right? That's that's sort of the point sometimes with old builds is you don't want to just destroy them to destroy them, especially if they're out of the way and not bothering anybody. Um, so I didn't. I didn't destroy it. I put one small upgrade in, which was this nether portal. I unearthed it. I unearthed it from it being a hobbit hole. And after doing that, I kind of realized like it's sort of house shape. Even after unburying it, putting a roof on, putting walls up. I mean, it's kind of shaped like a house. Oblong for sure. Not a symmetrical house in any way, but somewhat house shaped. You know, it's, it's, I just lucked out. I lucked out. I, you never know what you're going to find when you start digging things up. You know, you never know. And I got really lucky here. I think in this build, I got really lucky that even after everything, you can just, after moving all that earth, changing everything, uh, unearthing it, it just looked like a house. I put a roof on it and it looks, it, I mean, it's not the best looking house. Let's, let's all be honest. Let's, can we just say that right now? It is not the best looking house, but it's mine. And I created it all that time ago. And I, you know, I'm proud of it. It's here now and it always will be. It can also be more easily upgraded uh, because it has this giant lawn which I'm sure I will do something with eventually. Not sure what yet, but it does have this giant lawn, which eventually probably will have something in it. And it's also an L-Town, man. This whole place is historic. If you go watch the old videos, I spend a lot of time in L-Town when I'm really getting my strength. L-Town, I, I sometimes forget about it, but this place really is the reason that I'm so strong in Minecraft. Sentimental place for me. And uh, it's just nice to have this house here. I mean, I've, I've got the 100 Days Monument. It's really sentimental town is what it is. So happy that I was able to get that done. And it looked fairly good in the end. It looked fairly good. It does. It, it does. Just, yeah, whatever. While I'm on my way back, I'll quick touch on my green screen room. This is one thing that I built real quick. If you are a content creator, I would 100% recommend doing one. I haven't used it on shorts yet, but I've been kind of busy with just the holidays and getting 4,000 days out. Uh, this, this is going to be used in shorts, I'm sure. And pro tip, use lime green concrete <clears throat> and uh, the sunlight. Also, I believe you got to turn off smooth light and it should be a nice, good picture for you here. Boom, look at that. Beautiful green screen. Should work perfectly for any YouTube shorts. So any of my content creator friends, you want to put your uh, s uh, your skin up in a video, this is the best way. Just don't wear green armor. I can't wear my green armor, otherwise it'll show. But it looks very, very good. It does. All right, one more industrial thing, I think. We're going to talk real quickly about the slime farm. So this one, I, under normal circumstances, I would never put a farm in this area. It's not an area for farm. I don't know what I would call this side of the compound, but it's not industrial. You know, these are some ancient, ancient builds. That thing has been here for forever. These mushrooms, the cake factory, my uh, thousand days throne for the fireworks show. Uh, that, by the way, hey, if you want to watch it, it's still here. Still somehow works. Even after all these years, you can watch my Thousand Days Fireworks show. So if you want to do that, check that out. That is beautiful. But here's the slime farm. I am proud of this thing. It works very, very well. Uh, and, and if I ever need to make large scale projects that need things like perimeters or anything like that, I will now have a very easy way to get that stuff. I think I really came a long way in learning that. The, uh, the ability to build um, uh, TNT duping machines. I think that's going to really translate into some very, very cool builds in the future. And this slime farm is part of it. Also, really not a hard thing to build, guys. Get yourself a slime farm. I don't know why it took me so many thousands of days before I had one. It is really a very simple build. If you look at it, it's just platforms in a hole with some golems and magma cubes. It is not a difficult build to do. Definitely get yourself a slime farm. Big tip.
Yeah, turn on uh, smooth lighting again. That was just ugly down in there. Ugh. Yeah, see, that's much better. All right, little no, a little tiny thing here. Shouldn't be too long going over this area. And it's definitely something I want to redo is the grotto. The grotto was originally a natural formation. It was a grotto. It was sort of this, this natural, I don't know if you want to call this a lake. It's not a lake, more like a pond. Uh, it's not even big enough to call a pond. It's, it's this natural little tiny body of water. And around it was sort of like a hilly region but it was a bit of a carved out area. And it, it was a very natural formation. The reason there were villagers there is a very long time ago, above it, in the sky, was a prototype iron farm that I made. And there were probably, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 villagers up in there. And I eventually didn't want to look at that anymore. So I had them sent down to the bottom. And they ended up just, you know, kind of settling in the grotto. So for a long time, I called this the grotto and sort of forgot about it. And then in the leveling process, found it again. And this is the only thing that's left. Uh, because at the time when the grotto was still, oh, when the grotto was still the grotto, I just dug a hole for the villagers, put some beds in there and said, all right, this is your home. So that's the grotto. That's the story of the grotto. And now it's kind of ugly. Honestly, it's pretty much just a a stone hall for these villagers to sleep. Uh, it's something that I think eventually, and I know I say this all the time, but I think it's something I eventually want to do something with and, and sort of make into something a little bit more nice. Uh, yeah, especially with the sheep here. And we can talk about the sheep too. These sheep were part of a sheep farm that was on the compound over on this side. And it was a multicolored sheep farm, all the different colors of sheeps, uh, all the colors of the rainbow. And when it came time to get rid of it, I don't know, I don't know what moved me. I could have very easily killed them all, would have only taken a couple slices of a sword, but something told me, just let them free, let them roam. And so far I have. And I think what I'm hoping happens with these sheep is over time, they sort of disperse into the compound. They haven't been here that long, but even so, you've already got some sheep that are starting to sort of branch out. This is a red sheep, and he has made a travel of, I don't know, maybe 200 blocks. He's sort of moved away from, from where he uh, started. That yellow sheep over there has, has started to kind of move as well. Oh, there's a purple one. That's a very, is that uh, a Stolfo? Let's see, is, is this a Stolfo? I had no idea what a Stolfo was, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so when I showed that in the video, I didn't know I was like, it's like a silly name for a sheep, but a Stolfo way over here, a Stolfo's made quite the journey. And I'm hoping maybe over the course of several hundred, if not thousand days, eventually the entire compound has some rainbow sheep in every corner of it. So we'll see if that actually happened. But I'm very glad that when I was cleaning up that wool farm, I didn't just completely eradicate all of the sheep. Uh, I think for the most part, many of them will always live here. But I think over time, I will also get sheep wandering, hopefully, to every corner of the compound. And that's kind of a cool thing, almost magical. You know, you've got this giant wall and within the wall are several different things and uh, you know, every color rainbow sheep. It's kind of fun. Speaking of animals, before we talk about the wall, because I really want to talk about the wall. It's, it's been that thing. I've kind of been mentioning it a bunch. I haven't said anything about it, and I bet you're wondering why I haven't. It's because I'm saving it for last. But, you know, if you watch the video, we're getting close to the end. We're going to go see the animals in the animal house. So I streamed several days of 4,000 days. I definitely didn't stream more of the video than I did stream. But on the stream, uh, at times people would give me $20 to name an animal. And where's, I, I don't know if I, oh, you know what? The first ones are in my storage, <clears throat> but it started as a joke. Someone, someone had said, well, how much to name an animal? And I said $20, because I figured, well, oh, that one doesn't have a name. I figured 20 bucks, 20 bucks? For an animal? For a name tag? A little bit of my time? That's worth it, you know, whatever. It was like a joke, 20 bucks, name an animal. What I did not expect, was the huge amount of people naming things all over the compound. What you're seeing here is just basically dogs and cats because they can sit, you know, it's kind of easy to put them somewhere. You can have a dog, have it sit, and it'll just sit there. Uh, and that's, that's what you're seeing here. I don't know, someone can probably count them all up. I don't know how many there are because uh, it would probably take a very long time to count. You can see they are literally everywhere. <laughs> So I don't know how much money I've made off of 
uh, naming animals. But it was something that was just a complete joke that turned into something that I think people will really, really like. If you named one, I hope you, you know, can download the world and see it and kill every other animal that isn't your animal. That's something you should do as well. Make sure you're the only one. Uh, but it was really just something that I think a lot of people really, really liked. I gotta thank whoever was the first one for, for setting that off. Because I, I I mean, I don't know. If, if I did 100, that's $2,000. I probably did about 100, at least. And, you know, people were naming all kinds of stuff. Golems. And I, I gotta say, all the golems got great names. Golemy names. Shane, it's a good golem name. Lil Sean, yeah. Quave, oh yeah, good golem name. Crowin, oh that's a golem name if I've ever heard one. Uh, Cole? Yeah. You can name this Sniffer. Anyway, come back sometime I'm streaming. If I am, you can always throw 20 bucks, get something named. And uh, pretty much everything on the compound is, is up for grabs. I don't generally name things in the tower. And, you know, there's certain things, you know, people I'll say no to. But you can see pretty much everything has a name now. Because <laughs> uh, people would say, oh, well, I want to get something a little more unique. And uh, all the villagers, not all the villagers, but a lot of the villagers are named. And it's it gives the compound a little character, I think, when you're walking around it and you see all these different names. So it's something that's really cool. Uh, I think the reason I don't do it for free is because, well, then everyone would want it and I don't have enough. So you need a bit of a filter there. Uh, but it was something that... I think is really cool because it started as a joke and turned into this really cool thing where all of these people now are are part of 4,000 days, right? Matt Dent. Mm. Here you are, Matt. Here's your polar bear. Frank! Frank, your polar bear! So cute. I think there's maybe one or two more available. Yeah, well, one there. We got a polar bear. I see you. There's one polar bear, guys. These are a hot commodity. <laughs> Maybe two? I don't know. Plenty of pandas available. Plenty of pandas available. No one wants the pandas. And you can't name the brown one. That's mine. But speaking of cool traditions, let's go check out my camping site. You can pretty much see it. There's nothing really around. Let's check out my camping site. Do And here we are. Not much going on here. Pretty simple campground. If you remember in the video, all of this came from essentially one tree, which I think is kind of cool. The fact that there was one tree here and after however long I was camping, there's sort of like a new compound. I think some people were a little upset that there was pretty much no threat to me dying. But, yeah, you know, I thought it was kind of cool. I had so much land, I could camp inside of it. I think in the 5,000 days camping trip, I won't do that again. I'll, I'll go somewhere. But I've always, I've always gone to exotic places while camping. And I thought, what's, you know, I've got this, all this new land. I mean, thousands of blocks. You might as well camp on it. You know, it's, it's almost like I, I'm, I'm just that rich. You know, my estate is so large. I can camp on it. That was sort of the joke. So, um, I won't always camp inside of my own walls, but I thought it was really funny to do. And I think I like what happened here. It's it's almost like a little museum of that camping trip uh, because I put a little armor stand up with my armor and all my different items that I used in my bed. And you see all of the things that I did on my camping trip, which you can't really do. Not easily, anyway. I, I, I guess you could go back to those old campgrounds, but they're very, very far away. I don't exactly know the coordinates. Um, whereas this one, you can visit any time. It's within the wall. So I really, really like this thing. Oh, okay. Before we're getting really to the end, obviously, we've talked about the camping stuff. That's very near the end of 4,000 days. One thing I want to talk about real quick is really something that I'm going to be doing in 5,000 days. Uh, and that has to deal with my villagers. So if you remember, near the end, my melon men died. Yeah. Every single one. At the time, I think, in here, there were maybe only five. But over the years, we started with ten. So all of them are now dead. And there's no bringing them back. I, I, I mean, I could make new ones, I guess. But they died. It was It was very tragic. And it happened because I did a raid. And when you do a raid, they're centered on a village. And this game sees villagers as the village. And I basically had these buildings set to the raid. And it just ended in disaster. It never has before. And it did. Um, it did. So 
I think one thing I'm definitely going to do in 5,000 days is try to avoid that ever happening ever again. And I think somewhere in here, I'm going to build a dedicated zone where I can, in a vacuum, fight raids. I don't know how big that needs to be, but it's something I now want. Do we call it a raid farm? No, because I'm still going to be fighting the raids, right? I'm not... I'm not cheesing the raids. I'm not going to be farming the raids. I just want a space where I can fight them. And this is one thing I was hoping to get a little more feedback on because this is the monument to the fans. Not that there isn't other ones, but this is the one for the monument, uh, a monument to the fans. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I didn't really make that clear in 4,000 days. I would love to hear your opinion on this monument. What would you like to see? Do you like the pillars on the side or do you want me to knock these down? It's already changed a little bit. I think I really liked its first iteration, but then the world got leveled by me and it's now a bit different. So just let me know in the comment section below what you might like to see with this thing. I'm kind of stumped to what to do with it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but let me know. Just let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions. You are the fans. I'd love to hear what you want. I'm very powerful. I can do it. One of the last things I'm going to show here is the warden. Yeah, I'm going to show him. I I don't know how you all felt about this. I feel like it happens so late in the video. You know, obviously some people don't make it to the end. A lot do, but some don't. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure how people felt about me killing the warden that I... I know I mentioned him earlier even in this video. Uh, let me let me talk a little bit more about that. I know in the video I talked about, the, the 4,000 days video, I talked about how I'd been thinking about it for a long time and, you know, uh, I really was good in my decision of destroying the warden um and I, I i am i want you to know i very much don't regret killing the warden down here uh even though it took so much work to get him down here i do not regret it there is a tome here you can kind of look and, and see I, I put a little thing uh he just he he caused some issues right the warden having a warden down at the bottom of your base is just going to cause some issues um and in the video i kind of tried to remedy that you can see here this is where i started digging but i would sort of get to where that gold lock is and then start getting sniped by the warden so that's really something i should have done i should have done that before the warden even went in one of the big things i really hated about having a warden underneath my my compound is i did stuff down here one of the things i did all the time was farm the wither this is my wither fighting chamber right underneath my egg farm and i was always very nervous about the wither getting out and then freeing the warden and now i have this huge huge problem and you know now i don't worry about that anymore right it was something i worried about now i don't worry about it anymore so i'm very happy that the warden is gone I don't think if I ever get one again, it will ever go underneath my compound. I think I'll put it somewhere where it can be viewed, but not really interacted with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that's the biggest thing with trapping a warden. Obviously, that's history. I did. I trapped a warden. It lived under my base for, I don't know, I say it here, uh, 1,276 days. Uh, that's a very good achievement, but for those 1,276 days, I was limited in what I could do underneath my base at bedrock level because I had a warden down there. So I don't regret killing him. I don't in the slightest. So the wall, the wall, man, man, it, it I mean, look at it. I'm on 32 chunks, max render distance. And you can't see it. The wall is the single largest project I have ever built in my entire Minecraft career from the moment I started playing Minecraft to today. I have never built something so massive that took so long as my wall. It is huge. It's absolutely massive. It's one of the reasons I want you to download the world because I don't think you'll truly believe how big the wall is until you witness it on your own computer with your own eyes. It is truly massive. It truly is. A humongous, humongous project. Took me 600 days to build. And really, I would say, is the dawn of a new era for the entire compound. I think the wall changes so much about my entire base. It is now 
a defining feature of it. Before, the main defining feature was the Emerald Tower, and I think that still rings true. It's the Emerald Tower, it's iconic. But the wall on the outside now also defines it in its own way and physically defines it. If you look on the outside of the wall, it's wilderness. I, I made sure to put this wall up in a way where on one side of the wall, it would be my, my beautiful compound, right? Perfection. And on the other side, wilderness. You'll notice this wall is so big, there's nothing on the outside of it that I ever use that you could consider in my comp. Everything on the outside of this wall is wilderness. It is untouched land. And everything on the inside is what I've touched. Like I said, it truly defines the space. It sets my compound aside from the world. And it's just, it's beautiful. I will say there's a slight flaw. No one noticed it. No one noticed it. Not one comment. I've been reading thousands of comments. And there's a flaw. I'm going to real quick just show you. I'm going to put the flaw in the screen real quick. You can see it. It's there. It's on the screen right now. Pause. Take a little second. Maybe look around. See if you can find it. I guarantee you won't be able to though. No one will see it. And you know what? If there's a comment. Oh, I said it out. There it is. You're lying. It's a very tiny flaw. But I want to tell it to you right down here in the lights. So these lights are supposed to be one, two, three, four, five, six blocks apart. This little section right here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> slightly, slightly off. Uh, now, I've looked into this. To fix it, I would just have to rip out all of the lights from here over. Every light from here this way is perfect, but every light from here over is technically off by one. It's something I think I'm gonna do in 5,000 days. It shouldn't take that long. If you remember in the video, lights were not that long of a process. It'll be annoying, especially considering I shouldn't have to do it if I did it all correctly to begin with, but it's something that I fly around and I see it. <laughs> Though, it, uh, you know, you can't really notice it, but it, it's just one of those things that in my heart, I know I messed up. So it's something I'm going to fix. I probably could have gone another 5,000 days. Not a single one of you would have said a thing. Not a single one. Here's one thing I meant to show in the video. If you're standing on one side of the wall, it's so large, you can see the sunset through the wall. It's so large, there's a wall there, but it's so large, it's so far away, you can't see the wall. I just thought that was really fun. I didn't really show that in the video, but it's something I get a chance to show you here. I said in 4,000 days, one of the big things I wanna do with this wall is put a rail on top. Um, that's gonna be really, really cool. I think all I'll have to do is thicken the wall up a bit, which shouldn't be that hard, and then put a rail on it. It should just take more cobblestone. And I kind of need to because this whole side is kind of ugly. Uh, and you know what more is there to say? If you watched the video, you know how long the wall took. 600 Minecraft days, hundreds of hours. I mean, really, I could spend of probably a few thousand days filling this up and not have to go outside the wall for anything. I mean, it is just an absolutely world-changing build that I think will define the next phases of this series for, for many, many years to come. It's a big deal. <sighs> anyway, that's pretty much it. There's always some little things that I didn't talk about. There's always a lot that happens in 4,000 days that I don't talk about in the tour. But that's why you should download the world so you can really look at everything yourself and really see every little detail uh, I really recommend it to anyone who has Java Minecraft. And if you don't have Java Minecraft, get Java Minecraft. It's like the best version of Minecraft. So get it so you can download the world, be able to handle a massive TNT block. Let's see. I don't know if mine will, but we're going to try. Uh, I'm really actually looking forward to this. Oh, this is going to be cool. Let's hit the button. Let's see if it goes. Please tell me it does. Come on. No. Oh no. I bet you this redstone signal is just too long. Let me let me see if I can fix this real quick. I'm going to try to hit the button one more time. Please. Oh, it's going. Oh. Computer's not frying yet. Oh. And I'm living over here. Whew. Oh man, that, that, see that's not that bad. Honestly, that's kind of what I expected. I did not expect total compound wide catastrophe. There's enough water around it. The orphans kind of, the orphans took a beating for sure. <laughs> Pandas, there's like two left. Melon men, uh, completely gone. Uh, and even some of the polar bears, but yeah, and then a big crater, of course. Oh, and the statue of me. Ooh, that got wrecked pretty bad. <laughs> But honestly, not that bad, you know? Tower is pretty much unscathed. So I guess if this nuke ever goes off accidentally, 
on the main world, it won't be that big of a problem. It would take a long time though. That's a lot of dirt that I have to put down. Oh, that was fun. Like I said, if you enjoyed 4,000 days, if you want to enjoy it a little bit more, download my world. It's one of the best ways to see all of this. You can see everything on your own time and you can check that all out. That's in the link in the description. Also make sure to uh, listen to Built the Wall on Spotify and YouTube tomorrow. If you're watching this video when it's fresh, I hope you enjoy that. It's a very, very cool song that I hope you like. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be a bit of a hit of the video. It was kind of just a dumb thing that I did. Uh, but there were so many people that wanted an extended version. We got working on it. So uh, you'll see that on Spotify and YouTube. And again, just look forward to more hundred days, 5,000 days and all the stuff in the future. Thank you all. Really? It's, it's because of you I do this, fans. So thank you. Stay notable.